This week's episode is brought to you by me, or rather uh, my online trauma clinic that I run with Alicia, Mended Light. Go to mendedlight.com forward slash CT to schedule an 80-minute consultation with one of our trauma specialists today. What's the matter? Lives flashing before your eyes? No. We need to have a healthy fear of death, and we need to have a healthy fear of our own mortality because I think that's what keeps us focused on, okay, what do I want to do with the time I have? Either run and run and run, or you can sit there and like, look it in the face. Yeah. How do you cope with fear? Try not to be afraid. Fear me if you dare. Making peace with your mortality and saying, okay, instead of being scared of that, how should I just be living my life so that when death comes for me, I'm like, I'm good because I, I like the life that I lived and I liked who I was and I like what I did. Feelings just are. They just exist. We choose what to do with them, but their very presence is not shameful or bad. They, they just are, and they're part of the human experience. And there's no good column or bad column. There's just, okay, this is what I'm feeling now. What do I do with it? And as long as we stigmatize certain emotions, we don't allow ourselves to feel them, and we, we emotionally stunt ourselves and yes. limit ourselves. Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. My name's Alan Seawright. I'm a professional filmmaker who needs therapy. Over there... Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist who loves movies. Today, we're joined by... Emma McAdam from Therapy in a Nutshell. Another therapist! And that's good, because therapists... Mag. Plural, are going to react today to... Boots. In boots. <laughs> At Therapy in a Nutshell, if you haven't watched it, Emma does what we do without all the bullcrap. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> if you want the straight psychology delivered with a lot of personality and empathy and is really easy to digest, highly recommend her channel. I've learned things from her that Jono just won't teach me because he's too busy making bad dad jokes. <laughs> that is the gist of it. What are we going to be talking about in Puss and Booze today? What uh, are you thinking? How much I hope that this isn't the last, last wish. Never have I seen a movie and been like, yeah, I want a sequel to that more than this. As far as therapeutic concepts, um, I mean, probably anxiety. Fear of mortality, is that a, a thing? Mm hmm Yeah, for sure. Fear of death and some panic attacks, some emotional suppression. All right. Yeah. Bring it on. There's Let's a lot to talk about. We are gathered here today <laughs> to say goodbye <laughs> to Pussy Moots. There are no words to express such a loss. Thank you. <laughs> Hold it just too long, and there he goes. <laughs> Not to try. He was known across the land by many names. <laughs> Stubby Tubby. Okay. El Macho Gato. The Legend. Is it a useful therapeutic principle to like eulogize the passing of yourself into a different. Like who you used to be? Yeah. Or is this just silly? Like acceptance and commitment therapy all the time, they ask people to be like, what would you want your life to be about if you were looking back on it? <laughs> <laughs> and here he is again. Comes up from the Pops bottom. Up from the bottom. <sighs> okay, sorry, what were you saying? Sorry. No, that's all right. The cat's more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, to be fair, he's more interesting than all of us. Yes, this is true. <laughs> but look at all the flowers. Like, this didn't need to be such a beautiful film. Oh, was well, that his was mascara poorly... running? Yes, his mascara was his <laughs> eyeliner. <laughs> Okay, so wait, what were you saying then? Oh, like acceptance and commitment therapy will ask people a lot of times, like, okay, if you were to look at your life and to help them clarify their values, it'll be like, okay, write your eulogy. What would you want people to say about you and your life after you've died? And we were talking about one of our, in one of our earlier episodes that we were filming, uh, tying your worth to accomplishment instead of tying your worth to growth. Well, his worth isn't just about like what he's done, but also this idea of like, my identity is fearless. And it's not just like something he can do, but it's like the lack of an emotion is part of my identity. Right. Like I can't wow. feel fear. I just, I just wanted to look at Alan there. <laughs> Guys, we get smart. So that's what he's burying, right? Yeah. His fearless self is gone because now he felt something. But it's, yeah. but it's replaced by nothing, which is why he has no clothes anymore. <laughs> No, <laughs> he, he didn't. He didn't pick a new wardrobe. He's just like I'm, right. just like any other cat at this point. Yeah, just naked and flaunting my behind to the world. I do think in order to grow and to level up, sometimes we need to let the our past self die. Yeah, 
which for a lot of us, we're happy to do because we didn't like our past self and that's the reason we're growing. Right. But for a puss, he loved his past self, but that was the problem. Right. And he's not going to level up until he lets go of that. The, the easiest thing to call it, there's two things. The art style is absolutely fantastic throughout this movie. They're using all of the realistic technologies that they've developed over time to make things look hyper real. Mm-hmm. And they're using it to make things look painterly. Yeah. I noticed that. It's super, super cool. Really impressed with the artist. And the direction in that scene is flawless. The directors of this movie, like, yeah, have him exit frame and then hold. And then hold a little bit more. And then hold. And now he's back. Yeah. Like, it's it's <laughs> just long enough to get two jokes out of one empty frame. Yeah. And it's brilliant. Fear me if you dare. Or... Don't. I'm actually rather gentle. Still, for many of you, the world no longer feels safe because of loss, abuse, betrayal, or tragedy. Like Puss, maybe you used to feel confident, but now you live with anxiety, fear, panic, and anguish. Maybe you don't know who or how to trust, and it's rough to form lasting, healthy relationships. Perhaps you struggle to function and thrive at work, at school, in social situations, and it's hard to believe that things are ever going to get better. You may even feel like you're worthless, and whatever light you had inside is burning out. If any of what I've just mentioned describes you, we've got a proven system that has helped thousands of people to heal and thrive again. And I believe it can help you. Our innate healing program offers trauma recovery tools and support through a combination of online video courses and one-on-one work with a trauma specialist on our team. Our trauma specialists all have advanced degrees in clinical fields like psychology, family therapy, and trauma recovery. I've handpicked and personally trained all of them in our trauma recovery program. They are experienced and skilled and will guide you personally from fear to courage, from anxiety to power, and from darkness to inner light. They will also guide you through our Relationship Foundations program, a series of online courses in which I teach you all the conflict resolution, communication, and connection skills that I've taught thousands of people in therapy. We also have an online membership site with new courses, live Q&As, and virtual book club discussions with Alicia and I for your additional or self-guided support. It's time to step out of the darkness and into the light. It's time to replace fear with peace. It's time to get the help that you need. Go to mendedlight.com forward slash CT and schedule an 80 minute first session appointment with a member of our team today. Why are you so ridiculous, dog? What's your story? My story? (laughs) Oh gosh. It's actually a very funny story. (laughs) Back when I was a pup, me and my litter mates lived with a family, a family full of pranksters. We liked to play hide and seek, and I was always it. Pick on the little guy, am I right? <laughs> they tried putting me in a packing crate, a dumpster. No matter how hard they try, I'd always find them. So <laughs> one day, they get creative, and they put me in a sock with a rock in it, <laughs> and then throw me in a river. <laughs> 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 I never found them for my litter mate, so I guess I'm still it. <laughs> wow. That is the saddest, funny story I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on them. That sock they put me in, I grew into it. So, I got a great story and a free sweater out of it. Win, win. Dude, you didn't win. You of all people should have a wish. I already have a comfy sweater and two best friends. I got everything I could wish for. No magic required. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, lovely. When they say happiness in life is not what happens to you, it's how you respond to everything that happens to you. Now, Perito is, it's comical. He's, he's so much, he doesn't even realize they tried to drown him. Yeah. Right. right? Or maybe he does, and this is how he copes. I don't know. That There's a darker headcanon there. Yeah, repression. <laughs> yeah. Well, joke's on them. But just the idea of, like, I've got a sweater, I've got two best friends, I've got everything I need. No magic required. Yeah. You know? And I think that's a beautiful thing where we can we can be happy without being satisfied. We can still chase dreams and goals and ambitions. But we can also look at what we have and say, even if this is all there is, I can be happy with this. So, like, I think a lot of us, like, anxious, busy, you know, swipey, stabby people are like, I wish I could be like Perito. But at the same time, it's like, I don't I don't know if I can get there until maybe those, like, roses have, like, crushed me long enough that I, like, realize, like, it's not working. I don't know. Our society, <laughs> like, reinforces and, and celebrates the swipey, stabby, the, the, the charging in and the, and the aggression and the accomplishment. Hustle and, culture. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Get all it that. done and make a ton of money and yeah. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm saying we need balance. Like I think yeah. Perito might need some balance of, he needs a reality check. Sure. But then again, does he? 
Because he seems okay. Yeah, like his 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 life map is like this is working for him. I, I mean, he's not dealing, he's not living in truth, but at the same time, that's really working for him. <laughs> it, kind, it kind of is. It kind of is. And, and I think when people are really anxious, they feel like they've got to do a million things to like fix it and solve it, but it doesn't actually work for them. Where Perito, he's like, eh. I'm just happy sniffing the roses and it works out. I don't know. You know what I see in this is what works in one scenario doesn't work in another. The aggressiveness definitely works for Puss when he's facing off with Muerte at the end. He needs that aggression. Yeah. yeah. Like what works on Muerte isn't the, the approach for the roses. And I think that's the lesson for Puss is not to abandon all of what has made you successful, but you can't just copy and paste and do the same thing over and over. Yeah, it's like emotional flexibility, right? Big sign yeah. of mental health is like the ability to both be like courageous and intense and get a bunch of stuff done and also have the flexibility to be able to tone it down, like chill, relax, right? Really healthy yeah. people can do both or have multiple skills or more flexible mentally and emotionally instead of just having one skill and I'm never going to fear, I'm never going to have feelings, I'm never going to like feel sad and if I do, I'll run away from it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I think, I love that you say emotionally healthy people are able to like find that balance yeah. because most of us stay in the lane we're comfortable in. Yeah. I got it, Mr. Order! My dad! <laughs> <laughs> People die in this movie. So many people. <laughs> Mostly just all of like Jack Horner's friends. Yeah. yeah. How about that felt sense, huh? That intuition. Oh my gosh. Again, the direction in this film, the way they establish, like this is the legitimately the most scared I've ever been of an animated character. <laughs> Please, wait! And the animation is so beautiful, like the soft, almost impressionistic, like I just yeah. love it. It's just beautiful. Really, really well done. What? 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 How about that panic attack, huh? What? What's wrong? Perito does what he was meant to be, a therapy dog. Oh, such a good therapy dog. <sighs> Thank you, Perito. So what's going on with you, Puss? I, I am down to my last life, and uh, I, I am afraid. Well, it's okay to be afraid. No, not for Pussy Boots. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a fearless hero, a legend, but without lives to spare, I am nothing. So panic attacks can pop up for a couple different reasons. Like sometimes they do seem to come out of the blue. And then the other type is when you have an actual fear that you're very aware of. Like usually like someone's afraid of spiders or dogs and then they have a panic attack. Yeah. But the ones that come out of the blue are interesting because sometimes people are just literally afraid of the physical sensations they're having. And you'll see that a lot with people who are rigid emotionally. Like I'm not allowed to feel stressed. I'm not allowed to feel anxious. They'll feel their heart start beating. They'll feel themselves like breathing faster. And they'll be like, oh, I have to make myself calm down. I'm not allowed to feel this. And then they start this spiral with their emotions and their, their sensations and their thoughts, trying to suppress that. And so that's not uncommon with someone who's kind of rigid in their thinking like puss is like, I can't feel fear. I have to escape this. I have to make, you know, these feelings go away. It's not acceptable for me to feel this. I might die if my heart's beating fast. And then that'll trigger that panic attack. Yeah. Perito does what he's meant to do. And I think for a lot of people, like, okay, we tell them to breathe slow and deep. And they're like, I'm trying. Because mm -hmm. yeah. when, you, like, that's the thing is I can't. Right. And, and, having... and the more you force it, the worse it gets sometimes. Yes. Like sure. forcing at least a panic disorder. Like a one-off panic attack that can come out of the blue or be whatever. But panic disorder is usually caused by people trying to force themselves to yeah. not have a panic attack. Ironically, these stuffed animals with giant eyes mm -hmm. that look just like Perito are perfect 
for real life, even for adults, real life panic attacks, just to just to caress something softer, to hold it close, mm. or try a weighted blanket. Mm. Mm-hmm. That which seems counterintuitive because it feels like, well, wouldn't I feel pressing for, in on you? But right? but you feel you feel held, mm-hmm. you feel close. Or if there's someone in your life who can hold you, right? Uh, or if uh, barring all of that, ocean noises or or soft relaxing music, things that you can direct your mind to that instead of whatever you're freaked out about, and that'll help you come out of it. So one of the things that I loved about that scene. Uh, you know, obviously there's some artistic license there, but like muting everything and making it washed out and muddy sounding except for the heartbeat and the panicked breathing. What's wrong? Is that what you experience in a panic attack? Or yeah. is that just artistic license and just... You nailed it! To calm down from panic attacks, I think for a lot of people it does work to do like the body-based stuff just like you're talking about, right? Where you're like... <laughs> Slow breathing and doing something sensory because when you're stuck in that panic attack, you're not in the thinking part of your brain, you're not in the cortex part of your brain, you're in the limbic system. Yeah. And so you've mm. got to speak to that like physical sensations to calm yourself down. And so you can do like those grounding skills, like the noticing what's in your room, the weighted blanket, the smells, like those sensory things. But I practice acceptance and commitment therapy, which really focuses on teaching people to create space for their emotions calming themselves down actually works like really well and for some people trying to calm themselves down gets them stuck in this cycle with their emotions Mm. where they're just increasing that panic cycle until they hit exhaustion and then they collapse and instead you can practice like willingness which is this skill you can develop where you create space and you're like hey my heart's beating super fast and that's okay. I can allow it to do that for a minute. Let it run its course, yeah. And for the people who get stuck trying to force their emotions to change, option two works better. So just having those two different tools in your belt if you're dealing with panic attacks yeah. is really helpful. Kitty. <sighs> About that day, Puss in Boots is not supposed to be afraid. But outside that church in Santa Coloma, that was the first time I ever felt fear. So I ran. It it was a mistake, Kitty. It's okay. No, no, it was cowardly. It's okay. You alone at the altar. Puss. Your beautiful, poofy wedding dress. (laughs) it's okay. I didn't show up either. Wait, what? (laughs) What (laughs) Show up. Well, I knew I could never compete with your one true love. Who? Yourself, the legend. Oh. I wasn't going to show up for that guy. He even refers to himself in third person. Yeah. You don't seem like that guy anymore. For all of us, without humility, there's no relationship. Without uh, humility, there's no accountability. Without accountability, there's no trust. Without humility, there's no selflessness. As long as she, she says, I couldn't compete with your one true love, yourself. And in order for it to be a healthy relationship, it has to be one, reciprocal and two-sided, but two, it has to be based on humility and accountability. Humility, accountability, and vulnerability. That's what I was going to say, vulnerability, right? Like, as long as he's like, I don't feel things, I don't have fear, like, how can you connect with another human being? Yeah. Yeah. Because connecting with another human being, you have to, like, allow yourself to feel... It's scary. Oh, totally. It's it's terrifying for all of you out there who are struggling to, you know... (laughs) Feel that connection with somebody. Uh, bad news, it's going to be scary. Yeah. The end. Well, and we have this list of, this mental list of emotions that are acceptable and those that are not. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's acceptable for puss to feel, I can feel passion, and I can feel accomplishment, and I can feel happiness, and I can feel amusement, but fear, or sadness, or embarrassment, or shame, those are bad. Right. And I should not feel them. But you've heard me say this on the show many times, feelings just are. They just exist. And then what, we choose what to do with them, but their very presence is not shameful or bad. They, they just are, and they're part of the human experience. And there's no good column or bad column. There's just, okay, this is what I'm feeling now. What do I do with it? And as long as we stigmatize certain emotions, we don't allow ourselves to feel them, and we, we emotionally stunt ourselves and yes. limit ourselves. I see that a lot on the Internet, too. Like, if people are asking for relationship advice, where people will be like, oh, you know, I'm with my boyfriend and, and I felt really anxious, or I'm with my boyfriend and I felt sad, or I felt bad for a minute, and this thing happened, and everyone's answer is like, leave him! <laughs> like, right? like, that's Cut this thing. toxic personality yeah. out of your life! Any <laughs> negativity is bad! That's right, like, if you have feelings <laughs> that aren't just happy all the time in your relationship, that's a sign 
that your relationship is bad. Yeah. Just swipe left. And I'm not saying like just tolerate like abusive relationships. No, no, no. But no, like no. real relationships. Have ups and downs. Lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And lots of feelings. Yeah. yeah. Like all of them. And you can love the person that you're with all the time, but it doesn't mean you always like them. And that's romantic. <laughs> but but that's, that's romantic, but that's also parenting. That's yeah. also that's friendship. That's any relationship. That's, yeah. And yeah. I, I think this is why like people are so like leaning toward being so lonely, lonelier than ever, is because all the advice we're getting is like, if this relationship's uncomfortable, you should separate. If this relationship is uncomfortable, you should set more boundaries. You should distance, distance, distance. People are lonelier than they've ever been yeah. because they have lower tolerance for the combination of feelings that come yeah. as part of feeling love and happy too. And John Gottman phrases that as we need to turn towards instead of turning away. Yeah, lean in. Yeah, because we the fact is we're all we all have immaturity and insecurity to work through. And if we wait until we've worked through all of it to have a relationship, the human race will die. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got another 40 years. That's, that's it. So we, we have to work through these things in our relationships. It is very conflicting for me. <laughs> He's meeting all of his past selves. Without us, you will always live a life of fear. You, I do love the smell of fear. It's intoxicating. It is? Sorry to crush the party with your past lives, or <laughs> your past deaths, as I like to call them. <laughs> I was there to witness all of them. All of them. It's frivolous, and... But you didn't even notice me, because Boots in Boots laughs in the face of death, right? But you're not laughing now. You are no bounty hunter. You are death. That's good. I like movies that are good. More, please. <laughs> this is your commentary for the day? <laughs> I'm a professional. <laughs> Y'all get any more of them puss in boots? <laughs> <laughs> and I saw someone on social media say, I just saw Puss in Boots. It's one of the, my favorite movies of the year. And I'm like, Lisa, I want some more. What? Sophie, our producer, was telling me that the only reason she went to see it is because uh, a review said it was Puss in Boots meets Logan. Which is accurate. Pretty much, yeah. The body count is actually about the same. Probably about the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's less bloody in Puss in Boots, but still, like... People get jacked in this. <laughs> Less bloody, more confetti. Yeah. <laughs> Unicorn confetti? <laughs> yeah. I think the thing that makes this the most scary is, obviously, he's facing the personification of his own mortality. Yeah. I'm death. Straight up. Why psychologically is that terrifying? I think like Puss in Boots, we are all aware that we're going to die one day, but we don't like to dwell on it, and it doesn't feel real. Yeah. And so we kind of live our lives as if we're not going to. I laugh at death. <laughs> you see? And we live our lives wrapped up in the stupid daily crap and the petty things that we get hung up on or the pursuits that are kind of meaningless. Because if we actually make peace with I'm going to die, then we would spend our time better. And who wants to do that? Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to do things good. <laughs> no, I went to a training the other day where a therapist was talking about how she works with people who have panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she does they're afraid of dying, right? These physical sensations feel like they're dying. Sure. And she says, and then what? Like, why is that so scary? And she makes them like go into extreme detail about why death is so scary to them. And as soon as they do, and they actually honestly admit it instead of just running from it, yeah. they're like, oh, just like you said, I should live my life differently if my life is short. Yeah. Which is kind of what the film is building to yeah. is making peace with your mortality and saying, okay, instead of being scared of that, how should I just be living my life so that when death comes for me, I'm like, I'm good because I, I like the life that I lived and I liked who I was and I liked what I did. He then greeted death as an old friend and went with him gladly, departing this life as equals. Right, and I think that's, I think that's one of the reasons we're, we're scared of death is not doing the things that we wanted to do or becoming who we wanted to become, right? right? I mean, I think it's it's natural to be scared of, like, how you die. I mean, if you die... In yeah, a like pain, being scared of yeah. pain. Right, but, yeah. like, I think we want to live so that death itself is kind of like, okay, like, I did good, I experienced wonderful things, I like who I grew into, 
a lot of it was hard and miserable, but even the hard and miserable stuff was good for me. And here we go. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Oof, the animation is so cool. The first time I saw this, I was kind of not super on board with the very anime influenced action sequences. Bien. I don't hate it. Muy bien. That thing where they run at each other and fly into the air, like, is that from Mission Impossible, like the motorcycle scene? Like... <laughs> it's it's just a very anime-influenced thing, which mm -hmm. uh, Mission Impossible 2, two was two. very influenced by. John Woo loves anime films. You really gotta stop losing that. <laughs> Hello to my gatito blade. <laughs> <laughs> I love that puss is essentially Zoro. Yeah. Which, by the way, our younger fans, if you've never seen The Mask of Zoro, so good. It's so good. Skip The Legend of Zoro. But. Yeah. Was that Antonio Banderas as well? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The first Antonio Banderas one is great, the second one is. Pick it up. Not as great. I know I can never defeat you, Lobo, but I will never stop fighting for this life. <laughs> You're ruining this for me. I came here for an arrogant little legend who thought he was immortal. But I don't see him anymore. Live your life, Pussy Moods. Live it well. You know we will meet again, right? Sí, hasta la muerte. <laughs> I love that little bit of performance when uh, Death says, I don't see him anymore, and we cut to Puss, and he lets out a breath. Yeah. Like he was nervous. He's been holding, like, this whole time he presented this brave face, and then we get to see, oh, he was still afraid. Yeah, and yeah. And that's part of why... Death is letting him go. Because he's let go of his hubris. Yeah. The more I look at this, I'm like, what else do you do with fear? Like, what else can you do with fear of death? Like, yeah. you can either run and run and run, or you can sit there and, like, look it in the face. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, do you, how do you cope with fear? You don't try not to be afraid. Like, you've got to sit with it. I don't know. We need to have a healthy fear of death, and we need to have a healthy fear of our own mortality because I think that's what keeps us focused on, okay, what do I want to do with the time I have? Yeah. Otherwise, we keep it at bay and we don't really pay attention to it and then we fill our life with, and we fill our life with meaninglessness. And I'm not, and that's not, by the way, watching movies and playing video games because obviously we find a lot of meaning in that. I I'm, love watching movies and playing video games. <laughs> yes. If I find out I'm dying in three weeks, I'm going to spend a lot of time with my family and a little bit of time playing The Last of Us Part Two because I haven't played it yet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the, doing the things that we love and, and looking after the people we love. And so the question is, when he says, I will never stop fighting for this life, what does that look like for you? Yeah, man. Right. Boom. Not not playing The Last of Us Part 2 because I haven't played it yet. <laughs> Emma, tell us uh, where people should follow you. Obviously, your channel is... Therapy in a Nutshell. Okay. Anything else? Socials? You got merch? You have a book? Yeah, I just... You can go to my channel. That's fine. Okay. That's plenty. <laughs> just go to the channel. You're on Instagram and Facebook, though. So Yeah, I'm on Instagram. I've got a website. I've got a bunch of courses that go in-depth into all this, you know, technical stuff. All right. Awesome. You can learn things if you like to learn things. <laughs> so until next time... Fear me if you dare. I just love the smell of fear. Live your life, puss. Live it well. And, and watch movies. movies. We want to thank our patrons for helping bring you this episode, including people like Brave Home, Shannon Nilsson, 
Jody Galvano, Nurek, and Guitar Cat with a K. Go to patreon.com forward slash cinematherapy and enjoy all of our exclusive bonus content that you could only get there.